What's up, guys? I'm Mike from Stocked Up, and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. Tesla's battery event just happened, and Tesla is falling in after hours. So uh, we have a lot to go over in today's video. Uh, like we talked about in yesterday's video, we have a very action-packed week ahead of us. Uh, the market overall is at some pretty important levels. Uh, we had Tesla's Battery Day event that we're going to be covering shortly. We also have some uh, information with Powell. So he uh, spoke today in front of Congress. And he's also speaking tomorrow. So uh, overall, there's a lot going on in the overall market. And we have a lot to go over. So make sure you stick around to the end of the episode to see all the plays that we're watching for tomorrow. And at the end of the video, we have an $8.3 million options trade that we're going to be going over that expires this Friday. And uh, before we you know, start the episode, I just want to say thank you guys so much for all the comments on the previous episode. Uh, as a lot of you guys already know, comments really help grow the channel. And I saw so many comments on yesterday's video and Tom and I are so grateful for you guys. So thank you so much for that. Uh, but let's get right into it, Tom. So what happened in the market today? Yeah, you can see that ever since Tesla's event, it pretty much uh, went downhill. Ever since the event started, you can see that they kind of had a pop up. But other than that, it seems like all the options are gonna get killed on Tesla tomorrow, unfortunately for investors, but CNBC reports that Elon Musk said that he expects car deliveries to rise by 30 to 40% in 2020 alone. And his own, in his own words, he says, in 2019, we had 50% growth. And I think we'll do pretty well in 2020, probably somewhere between 30 to 40% growth, despite a lot of very difficult circumstances. So, I mean, that, that is good growth, even though, you know, um, the stock's not doing well right now in after hours, that's still great growth considering the bad circumstances with the overall um, electric car market right now. Um, obviously, there's not a lot of people going out and purchasing new cars right now, but it's still good to see Tesla growing even though there's all these problems still. True. I mean, uh, my I watched everything. I watched the shareholder announcement conference thing, and I also watched uh, the battery day. So I was there for uh, everything. And with everything said, I think that it's great for the company for the long term. Uh, we all know that Tesla is doing great. Uh, they were at lows of about $70 back in March. And right now they're sitting around 400. And of course, that is on a post split price point. You know, uh, they had a five for one split back in uh, August. So, uh, or September in uh, overall, I think that everything that was covered is great for Tesla for the long term. But I think the reason it fell today was because it was just overhyped. You know, we had Elon posting on Twitter uh, for a while now saying, you know, this is just going to be the best showcase ever. And, you know, all this great stuff is going to happen. And, you know, there, there were cool announcements at the Battery Day event, but it, it wasn't anything that was just crazy. You know what I mean? And I think investors and, and the whole event overall was just overhyped and just in yesterday's video, we said multiple times that the safest thing to do with Tesla, and we said this yesterday, is, is to not play the event, or if anything, play Tesla after the event. And whether you bought call options or put options as of right now, um, you're most likely going to lose because uh, the market makers for Tesla were expecting about a $60 move to the upside or the downside. And as of right now, we have less than a $25 move. So, um, you know, that, like I said, that can change by morning. If, if Tesla uh, falls more or, you know, somehow reverses and rises up a lot, then options can do okay. But as of right now, it's really looking like whether you bought calls or puts, it's not going to be good for you. So um, as of right now, what I see with Tesla, because I'm sure a lot of you guys are like, all right, you know, the event happened, but I still want to make a trade. So I'm just going to state this uh, right now. I don't love Tesla for a play tomorrow. And I, I think there's just a lot more opportunities that we're going to cover in the rest of the video. But for those people who love to trade Tesla, uh, what I would do is I would plot out the support and resistance levels in the morning, right? Uh, see where Tesla is hit the lows and the highs for the overnight session, the after hours and pre-market, and then just play between the support and resistance levels, ride the momentum for a day trade maybe. But uh, as of right now, um, I think that's the best thing to do. What are you seeing? 
Yeah, that's exactly what I see. I mean, there's not going to be really a huge play on them tomorrow. And really, if you get in, you're going to be getting in after an IV crush more than well, more you know more than likely. The IVs obviously tanked in after hours here, which was um was expected with this event. It's almost like an earnings event how the IV just comes down, and that's the market maker's move right there, guys. That's what's going to kill the options pricing, and it really sucks for everyone holding it. And I wouldn't even touch this. You know, I'm more of a conservative trader. So the Tesla is not even a, a stock that I would even have traded over the past week or even the past couple of days. But I know a couple of guys played it, um, you know, heading into the event and did pretty well. But other than that, you know, I don't think that playing it after, after the event is a smart move. You know, we have a lot of other things going on. Like Nike had a really good after hours. Um, you know, they had great earnings and they ended up rising a lot on these earnings. They're up over, um, let me see the percentage in after hours here. If I can get my um, trend line drawing tool up here. Let's see, they are up a total of about 12% right now in after hours from close. And that's amazing for a stock like Nike. And this stock is a great long-term hold as well. I know a lot of people, you know, they love to hold Nike long-term and it's just been a great growth stock over the past few years. And it's crazy to see a stock like them pop 12% on a day whenever, you know, we, we, everybody was looking at Tesla to the upside. Yeah, Nike's doing pretty well, actually. They hit lows of about $60 back in March, and right now they're sitting at about 130 which is all-time high. So that's great to see uh, they had good earnings, Tom. Yeah, great earnings. Um, their sales were actually up 12% or 13% on, on a currency-neutral currency basis from last year, and this is coming from Nike.com, and their digital um, sales increased 82% which is amazing to see for them, um, you know, and their overall reported revenue was actually down 1%, but that's not terrible considering what's been going on right now and considering their direct sales and online sales were a lot better. Yeah, I think the direct and online sales played a huge uh, part in this runoff, you know, to see the digital sales up 82%, that's, that's pretty str uh, strong. So I like that overall. Uh, I can see Nike continuing for a day or two. Um, but you know, with these earnings runners, it is already up how much percent, Tom? About, about 12% in after hours alone. Okay. So yeah, I mean, I can definitely see a continuation with this. Uh, we'll see what happens in the morning. So um, I just want to talk about Tesla a little more. Like, um, like you were talking about before we headed into Nike, uh, you're talking about the IV crush. And I'm sure a lot of our viewers are like, what is IV? What's an IV crush? And in the options market, there's a very important metric called implied volatility. And pretty much uh, the higher implied volatility is, uh, the, more ex the, the more expensive options are, but also the more volatile the stock is. So for example, if we have a stock like Coca-Cola, right? It doesn't really move too much. The implied volatility is 0.28 or 28%. However, when we, when we look at a stock like Tesla, the implied volatility is 1.14 or 114%. So basically what this means is Tesla is a lot more volatile than Coca-Cola, as you can expect, and their options are a lot more expensive too. So when the implied volatility falls, basically what that means is the value of the options also fall. So that is what Tom was referring to when the IV crushed. And the IV crushed because everyone was expecting a crazy move from Tesla today, right? And that clearly did not happen. It was pretty much flat, but now we're starting to fall a little bit. So everyone was just expecting like a huge run up or a huge run down, when in reality, it, we kind of got something in the middle. So that's what's happening with Tesla. As of right now, uh, Tesla's sitting at around $404. As of right now, calls and puts are gonna get crushed tomorrow, but that can change uh, as Tesla will move uh, before market opens. So keep that. Yeah, and a couple more things about Tesla is that with Tesla, I mean, it was really um, kind of lackluster of an event. You know, I mean, I was kind of, ex you know, whenever they unveiled their Model 3 in their truck, you know, they, they kind of got on stage and had a bunch of lights and, you know, it was pretty exciting. But today they were just going over like really specific details on their battery cell production and, and battery cell technology that I think a lot of investors, you know, can't even comprehend because they're not into that type of stuff. And I think that that's really a big factor because I think it went over a lot of people's heads, all the technology that he came out with, because it was pretty good battery technology, actually. Um, you know, they're going to be um, increasing the range on their vehicles by over 54%. I mean, that sounds pretty good. And, you know, it sounds good because 
their truck was due to have 500 miles. And now if it could have 750 miles per charge, that would be fantastic, you know, in a uh, innovation standpoint. But really, I think that it just flew over a lot of investors' heads and maybe uh, was a little overcomplicated for, you know, for being hyped up kind of like it was. Like if he got on Twitter and said, you know, I'm just going to go on stage and geek out about all the specifics, <laughs> then it would have been a totally different, you know, um, mindset for traders going into this. Yeah, well, in <laughs> the event that you're talking about with the truck, that's where uh, the guy threw the ball at the truck and the glass broke, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was hilarious. But the cool one was the Model 3 event where I think they were going like, you know, they were showing how quick it went, like 1.9 yeah. seconds, 0 to 60 and stuff right. like that. Yeah, we had a pretty dry event today. So we'll see what happens with Tesla, but a lot of it's just going to be a, a momentum trade, you could say, like, uh, just take advantage of the momentum. If you see Tesla flying down at market open or somehow reversing and exploding up, uh, I just see Tesla as like a, as like a day trade right now. Uh, just ride that momentum. So now for our Discord member of the day. Today's Discord member of the day is Dr. Kim. So Dr. Kim has been in the group for a little while now, uh, always sharing great information. It's always super positive. So Huge shout out to Dr. Kim for uh, always spreading positivity and good information in the Discord chat. So now for our momentum plays for tomorrow, and the first one is Pinterest. So P-I-N-S uh, was up about 10% today. What levels should we be watching for tomorrow? Yeah, make them pop above 4075. All right, and if we see them break above the level Tom listed, uh, we will be uh, eyeing it to the upside. The next one we have LULU. -L -U. So Lulu uh, up about 6%. What levels should we be watching? Make them pop above um, 123.25 cool. or 323.25. Sorry. Right, there we go. And then last but not least, we have Twitter. T W T R. Twitter. Just make them pop above 43 even. All right. So all of these plays we are eyeing to the upside only if they break above the levels. Tom listed. Again, these are day trades. Uh, just quick little momentum trades. So um, yeah, great stuff. And now for our $8.3 million call option for tomorrow. And we are looking at the Facebook 260 strike call options that expire this Friday, September 25th. So Facebook's looking pretty decent right now. I don't love the setup, but given that the option is only about $6 out of the money, and it has three days left of time, and Facebook had a, a pretty good day today. I can see the smart money behind this option longing this play. Um, like I said, I do not love the setup, but I think it's a, a pretty decent setup, and I can definitely see uh, Facebook going up. But like I said, I don't, I don't love the setup. So uh, what do you think? Yeah, I think they have a pretty good support at 250. So I think as long as they can hold that tomorrow morning, then I think it might be – you know, good play and you can maybe follow them, you know, longing this stock or longing the options anyways. But I think that, you know, if they fall below 250, it seemed like that's a pretty good support. They bounced off of it, you know, about four different days in a row. So I think if they can stay above that, then I think, you know, then they might be longing this. Awesome. So now for our comments from the previous episode, and we have Invictus thing as important as brushing my teeth. I watched the stocks with Mike and Tom show right before bed every night. So there we go. Uh, thank you so much for that comment. Uh, as you guys know, uh, comments really help grow the channel. Um, so thank you so much for all the comments. Um, we have Stuart saying, thanks for the recap. What do you think about REGI? So let's take a look at REGI, Tom. Uh, sitting right around $47.50. Uh, it's looking pretty decent. What do you think about REGI from a technical standpoint? Yeah, from a technical standpoint, it looks like it's done pretty well on a daily chart over the past couple of weeks. Just pretty much just went straight up. And even over the past year, really, I mean, they've had really good growth, it looks like. And their earnings per share it looks like it was pretty good. You know, I obviously it fell a little bit in the third quarter here or the second quarter. But um, other than that, it looks like their stock's performing very well. And on an intraday standpoint, it seems like they have a, a support right around the $49 level. So I would kind of make it break, you know, 49 or 49.25 before getting in this to the upside with calls tomorrow. Um, they had a pretty, pretty bad red day um, two days ago, 
but they obviously recovered from that the same day. So, you know, that, with that being said, I think that they could possibly fall back down, but with the growth right now, I think if they just break that high, maybe a 49, 22, this could be a great runner for tomorrow, just given how much it's ran over the past year. I mean, I would have loved to trade this on the way up. Yeah. They're at all time highs right now. They're looking pretty decent. Um, yeah. Great stuff and great questions. So we had Mr. Smith saying Roku is insane right now. Awesome video guys. So uh, Roku, let's see. Oh yeah. Roku had a pretty good week so far. They actually closed Friday sitting right around $160 and they broke $195 today. So Roku's looking pretty good. It looks like a, a pretty good continuation play actually. What do you think about this one? Yeah, I think this is very nice. I think that this could easily continue up tomorrow. Obviously, just make it have momentum and open because whenever they get this high, whenever they come down, they like to come down quick. But other than that, I think if they can hold certain levels, like if they can hold the, uh, what's this level, 192.25 um, or 192.50, then I think that this could be a great play. But um, I really like the growth on this over the past year. I know that we've played options on this for quite a while now. And they're in a pretty nice trend of the upside. Let me draw it really quick. But you can see that this trend has been pretty well, and they can, they just seem like they cannot break this to the downside here. Yeah, it looks pretty good, and their implied volatility is, is pretty good too. So their options are well-priced, and they are breaking all-time highs today. So, you know, with those tech stocks, they like to run, and uh, Roku has that momentum, so it looks pretty good. Um, we have Samora saying, nice call on PTON, guys. Made 30% off of it. So great job with that. Uh, so get PTON. Oh, wow. That's, that's doing pretty good, too. I remember they had a run-up into earnings last week. Um, it's looking pretty good. Uh, right now for PTON, um, it, it just kind of seems like it's going to be like a slow mover. I, I see a lot of volatility at that hundred well between the hundred dollar and the eighty dollar level tom do you see that channel between a hundred dollars and eighty dollars um Let's you know go. yeah so like even yeah like that or it, it's more uh defined on a daily chart but oh gotcha gotcha yeah but either way though um i see volatility between a hundred dollars and eighty dollars but besides that um it, it looks like it'll just be like a slow and steady mover as we've uh, seen since March. So what do you think about this one? Yeah, I think it's the same thing. It could stay in this channel. The thing I'm really worried about with it right now is that obviously they're due to have a lot of growth and they've been projecting a lot of growth at their earnings reports. But um, if they do end up with lower highs right here, that would really worry me. Like if they started having red and maybe they came back down to $80 over the next couple of weeks, that would really worry me with this stock if they had lower highs, but as long as they can break this and make higher highs, then I think it can, it can continue running, of course. But um, it's just, obviously there's a lot of stocks right now with this type of setup where um, ever since the virus, they've really just went straight up. And this is just another one of those examples. And Peloton with their growth outlook, I could see them becoming much higher um, than $100 a share within the next few years. Yeah, COVID really benefited them. So uh, with that being said, Tom, do you have any last minute stocks, options, or any insight for the market for tomorrow? Yeah, I was going to really look at GLD, which has kind of fallen below support here. We had a support right around $180. Or if you even wanted to go lower, you could just say $179. But it looks like they've fallen below that. And this stock kind of looks like it could fall back down to the support of $170. And I really like this play. Um, it looks like it's gonna be a slower mover though. You can see how it's bouncing off this 100 SMA and then going down. So I think that if it can break the low of today, which was right around $178, I think this could be a great play for tomorrow. Um, you know, you could just play it from 178, get some quick puts and play it from 178 to 177 or even you know if you wanted to go all the way down 176 75 but i would probably take profits around you know 177 20 or 177 if you did play this and you saw momentum on this going down tomorrow this has been a great uh setup on gold going up over the past uh over the past year or so and they've really been making um great strides forward on gold and i know president trump's pretty big on gold and a lot of people predicted him to make this go up, but whenever you have things go up, they obviously come down and there's a lot of room to the downside on this stock. 
Yep. And uh, yeah, so that'll wrap it up for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for all the likes and the comments, especially in yesterday's video. <laughs> we had so many comments and that really helped grow the channel. So thank you guys so much for all the support. Uh, comments and likes really help grow the channel. And of course, thank you to all of our new subscribers. Uh, if you guys aren't subscribed already, don't forget to subscribe. You see our daily videos on your YouTube homepage every single day. And with that being said, uh, if you guys want to try out the new options day trading bot, you can click the stocked up options alerts link in the description down below. And if you guys have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. Well, other than that, thanks for watching.